The Senator from Harrisburg, Senator Obenshain. Mr. President, uh, speaking to the bill. Senator has the floor. Uh, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, um, first, I, I do want to uh, commend the members of the committee for their hard work. And I would agree with the comments that have been made by some members of this body that this uh, bill represents a much better bill than we started out to generate and then we were presented with at the beginning of the year. I commend them for their good judgment, uh, their good work for their decision to w wait a week to see what the revenue figures for January revealed, and uh, I commend them for making adjustments. However, I cannot stand here and join the Hallelujah Chorus. Uh, I am uh, pleased with some developments in this budget, and I take note in particular uh, as to the comments from the senator from Northern Fairfax who gave extended thanks to a number of uh, entities and individuals for uh, some of the contributions that they made. I think she thanked uh, President Obama and the Congressional Democrats, and uh, I suppose I thank them too for the uh, presence that they have bestowed upon us, but if we're going to thank them, I suppose we also ought to probably be extending our thanks to our children and to our grandchildren who are going to be paying the price tag of those gifts for generations to come. And I note that in addition to the $800 billion worth of gifts and largesse that have been distributed around the nation uh, today, the administration is moving forward with the next chapter uh, in uh, gift giving and is proposing another nearly $100 billion of contributions uh, to uh, rectify part of the uh, housing crisis. Uh, I would respectfully submit that although I am pleased that we addressed the additional $800, billion, $800 million in shortfalls that were identified as a consequence of January's figures, that we uh, last year went through this exercise and we passed a budget that we all knew as we sat here. We knew it was based on projections that we could not possibly meet under any circumstances. And with a wink of the eye and a nod, we passed that budget knowing full well that the money was not going to be there. And although this budget does represent an improvement over the first and initial drafts, I, I would point out a couple of things. One thing is if you look at the Senate, junior senator from Virginia Beach's uh, Wall Street Journal, you will note that the Federal Reserve today now expects an even, even, is reporting that it expects an even deeper contraction. This is grim news. Grim. Yet, this budget is based upon projections that in July, beginning in July of this year, of 2009, we are going to begin generating revenue increases averaging 4.5%. Now, we can all link arms and congratulate one another and pat each other on the back and say that we have solved our long-term problems. We have plugged some holes. We have one-time stimulus money that has been dropped in our laps by the federal government, and we are committing those funds to long-term obligations that we have undertaken here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We'll feel better for a few months, but we're not going to feel better come June, July, August, towards the end of the year, and we're certainly not going to feel better when we show back up down here in January of next year. I respectfully submit that the committee did good work, but this budget is deeply and fundamentally flawed and is relied upon resources that we will not have again, and upon projections that we all know 
will not come to pass. I will undoubtedly be a lonely voice, and I will be a lonely spot of red up on that board. However, somebody has to stand up and say that the emperor has no clothes. I wish that this economy would turn around. I hope that it will. I hope that I am standing here in the fall red-faced, confessing that you all were right, that our economy has bounced back with, with, with vigor. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. Thank you, Senator.